Do you bypass those recipes that call for raw eggs? Because you're a little nervous about the salmonella, well, I don't blame you there. However, there is a quick and easy way that you can pasteurize your eggs at home, and I'm gonna show you how. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today, we're gonna use a simple technique called sous vide cooking to pasteurize some eggs at home. Now, I'm gonna jump right in because it takes a little bit of time to get the water heated. So, I'm gonna put in 10 cups of room temperature water, and I'm using the sous vide function on the Ninja Foodie a pressure cooker and air crisper, and I'm also gonna be using my Inova Immersion Circulator, a sous vide cooker uh, as well. We're gonna do both. And I'm adding in 10 cups of water because that's how much it has taken for the eggs to be completely submerged in the liquid. When you're choosing your water amounts, what I recommend doing is putting the food into the sealed plastic bag that you're sous vide and put it into the pot that you're gonna sous vide in or the container and make sure that it will be submerged, pour in the liquid so that it's submerged. Then remove the bag and you can start to heat up your water. All right, so let's get this in and then we will turn these both on. The temperature that I'm setting is 135 degrees Fahrenheit for the eggs. That is the temperature that is going to kill any salmonella that might be present without cooking the eggs. Okay, so let's get these set. So I'm gonna turn uh, the Ninja Foodi on. I'm gonna go to the sous vide function. 135 is what I want, so I'm gonna take that up to 135. Hit the start button, and we do put the pressure lid on with the valve vented when you're heating your water for the sous vide. So we're gonna make sure the valve in the back is to the vent position, and we're gonna let the Ninja Foodi preheat, which it's showing with these dots here. When it's completely preheated, it'll prompt us to add the food, so we'll take off the pressure lid and add in the food. All right, so let's go ahead and turn this on. And if yours beeps at you or anything like that, it means you don't have enough water in, so go ahead and put more water in. It doesn't matter how much water you put in, it's just gonna take a little bit longer for it to come up to temperature. All right, so what I have here are a dozen eggs, and these are freshly laid from my chickens, and I've washed them, and they are ready to go. You can use any size or style eggs for this, so it can be white eggs, brown eggs, it does not matter. Freshly laid, store-bought, no, no problems, makes no difference. All right, so what I'm gonna do for this test is I'm gonna put them into a plastic bag. You don't have to, you can simply set the eggs in the bottom. But what I found is it's a little bit easier to get them out at the end if you put them into a bag. So I'm gonna add six of the eggs into, this is just a regular freezer bag. We're not going at high temperature, so it's not gonna melt or anything like that. Okay, so you can use a larger bag. You could do a dozen eggs or even two dozen eggs at one time. As long as they're submerged in the liquid, it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna push some of the water, I mean, some of the air out. I am gonna put some water in this before I put them in, but for now, I'll just set it there. Do the same thing, because I'm gonna test both of these. And it's really cool, because there is a way for you to tell if the egg has been pasteurized, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Now, I'll keep this carton, and when the eggs are completely uh, finished pasteurizing, I'll put them back in, label them with a wax, pencil that I have here and put them back in the refrigerator and they will stay good and they'll be pasteurized. They'll stay good for about three to five weeks. All right, so let's talk about the pasteurization process and how it works. So you know you can cook an egg um, to like 165 and kill all the salmonella in just 10 seconds. And that's what we do if we fry an egg. However, if you wanna go at lower temperatures, you need to hold it there longer. So we can kill the salmonella in the egg white and in the egg yolk if we keep at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for a period of one hour and 15 minutes, okay? That's according to all the research that I did through the USDA and I compared a lot of different charts um, and that seems to be the magic number. So 135 degrees uh, Fahrenheit for an hour and 15 minutes. 
So there's two ways to kill uh, any salmonella that might be present in eggs or any food. This applies to any food. And that is through time and temperature. So you can go at a higher temperature for a shorter period of time, or you can go on a lower temperature for a longer period of time, which is what we're gonna do today using the sous vide method. All right, so the ANOVA has reached one, it's 134.9 and then it goes up to 135 and then back down. One thing that you can do if you have this style of a sous vide cooker is you can cover this pot with foil or something. That's gonna keep in the heat and it's gonna heat up a lot quicker. I should have probably done that. I just didn't even think about it. All right, so now let's go ahead and get our six eggs in. Our Ninja Foodies should be ready shortly. And to do that, I'm gonna take some of this water so it's heated already, pour it into the bag here. Get out as much air as you can to prevent the eggs from floating up or anything that you're sous vide cooking. Then we're just gonna lower it here on the bottom and we will start a timer. Needs to go for one hour and 15 minutes or 75 minutes. All right, so I'm being prompted to add the food. So I'm gonna remove the lid. You don't need to do anything because it's vented and it didn't, um, it's not sealed or anything with the pin in the back. And I like to take a temperature of the water. I did that off camera. I always check the accuracy, although the ANOVA is very, very accurate. I'm a little less sure about the Ninja Foodie, so let's go ahead and take a temperature. But we are pretty good, 136. So 138, a little bit hot. Um, what I found is that there, the Ninja Foodie is not precise with its temperatures. So the other thing that I've noticed about the um, Ninja Foodie is that even though there are some temperature differences, the end result was pretty much the same. Jeff and I did a test with some steak and we had, I think it was like two little small four ounce fillets and we did a test between the Ninja Foodie and the ANOVA, and even though the water was a little hot, um, our steaks were cooked perfectly. I mean, they were both really good, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, it is a fun way to kind of experiment with, with sous vide cooking, but if you find that you like it and you really want to do a lot of it, I would definitely recommend investing in a circulator type of sous vide because it circulates the water, and it just, I, I think it's just more accurate. All right, but our eggs are submerged. We'll put the lid back on. And now the time starts. Make sure you're vented here. And now it defaults to three hours. I'm gonna have to take it down here. We'll do one hour and 15 minutes. So at the end of the hour and 15 minutes, I will plunge them into an ice bath. And then I will show you what they look like when they are pasteurized. All right, so we are almost done with our time here, and I started this one a few minutes earlier, so I know we're done there. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the little cover there and grab the bag. And what I like to do is just go ahead and take a little scissors here and clip off so we let the water out. All right, I'm gonna place these into the cold water. I will get some ice and pour that in as well and we're gonna let them chill for about 15 minutes or so. All right, we're done here. Now let's check the temperature of the water and see, did we stay at that 135? 136, that's not too bad. So that, that's pretty good. So it maintained the temperature, that's a good thing. You can handle the eggs, they're not super hot or anything. It's not hot enough to burn you. Same thing, put some ice in there. And we'll leave those alone for about 15 minutes. And then I will show you what they look like inside when they are pasteurized. 
All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. They've been in the ice bath, so now I'm gonna crack them into these bowls. So this is the one that was done in the Ninja Foodie, and this is the one that was done with the Inova. And here is a fresh egg that my chickens just laid today. And you can see what that looks like for comparison. So we've got the yolk, obviously, and we've got kind of a clear white uh, around it. So let's go ahead and crack these. So it's liquid, but it is cloudy. Can you see that? And same here. Okay, so that's how you know if they're pasteurized, they're gonna have a cloudy white, and these are safe to use in uh, most recipes that call for uh, raw eggs. Some you wouldn't wanna use them because of the cloudiness, but like I'm making a Caesar dressing, and these are gonna work perfectly because I'm just gonna use the yolks, and they're gonna be perfect as the raw egg in the Caesar dressing. All right, well, if you wanna pasteurize your eggs at home and you have the Ninja Foodie with the sous vide model you can, or the sous vide function, you can certainly do that, or you can use a standalone, you know, a Nova immersion circulator type and pasteurize your eggs. Now, one thing I wanna mention here is that I'm not giving any guarantees that these are pasteurized to the specifications that the USDA demands of pasteurized eggs that are sold in the grocery store. So if you are um, very young or very old or have a compromised immune system, make sure that you purchase pasteurized eggs from the grocery store if you're gonna use raw eggs in a recipe, just for safety reasons. Now, once your eggs are pasteurized, you wanna be able to tell them apart from the ones that are not. So what I like to do is use a wax pencil here and just put a P on it for pasteurized. And then if I only wanted to pasteurize, let's say four eggs out of the dozen, I'll be able to tell, okay, which ones are pasteurized and which ones aren't. So, all right, I'll label up the rest of them and pop those in the refrigerator.